when we go on the official documentation, we can see that Nuxt provide use fetch, use lazy fetch, use async data, and use lazy async data. So we are going to start by use fetch. And what we're going to do at first is to go on our project and on nux.config.ts, I'm going to put my SSR mode on false. So like an SPA or a static website. All right. So now I'm back and now my application is not uh, declared as a server side rendering mode for now. So by default, Nux3 is on SSR, but we just remove this SSR mode. So everything is happening client side for now. And we are going to start with use fetch. Within your page, components and plugin can use use fetch to universally fetch from any URL. Universally, it means on the server side or on the client side. This composable provides a convenient wrapper around user async data and fetch. So that's very nice to see. However, what is async data? We are going to see it after. And what is fetch? Well, it's actually dollar fetch because we know that with Node.js, we have this method fetch that help us to fetch some data. And actually it's also available in JavaScript regularly. So we have this dollar fetch. And if we go on the API side documentation of Nuxt, we can see that the definition of use fetch is these composables provide a convenient wrapper, exactly what we read, around async data and fetch, dollar fetch. So it's a combination between use async data and fetch. And if I click on dollar fetch, we see that dollar fetch is actually a, a, a function that is globally exposed. And that function comes from a, a library called ofetch. And when I click on ofetch, I arrive on a repository and it's called a better fetch API works on node browsers and workers. So this fetch here is available on three sides, node, browser and workers. And it comes from, of course, NGS, the unified JavaScript tools that we talked about before. So use fetch automatically generate a key based on URL and fetch options provide type ints for request URL based on server routes and infer API response type. And down there, we've got an example. So we see that at first, our use fetch method can be destructured and it can be destructured in different uh, types. And we can look at this type down there. We've got data, which maybe will be the response. And of course it will be the response, but we got also pending and pending can be a loading state that will be very useful. We got also refresh, which means that actually later we will get a function called refresh that when we click on it, will refresh the call and the data. We've got execute and we got also error to uh, uh, actually display the error. And as options in our fetch, we've got a lot of other elements, but we are going to come back at it just after. What I need to do for myself is just to fetch from an API. And actually, which is cool with Next, is that we can create a server side. So what we got here is a server folder. And inside I got a product, a products root which is available at localhost slash API slash products. And I got this JSON and you understood now that this root products will distribute my JSON array. So back in my products.ts, what I can do is just to import my data. And when I call this endpoint, it will return to me the data from my JSON. So I'm going to get back, I'm going to update and there what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on localhost slash API slash products. And there we go. We've got our data there. So the thing is that now on my index, what I want to do is to just fetch this endpoint. So what I'm going to do is simply to put const data and like it would be a response. Actually, I'm destructuring here my response. I'm going to type use fetch and here it's going to be API slash products. And what I want to do, I want to console log this data. There we go. Let's get back. Let's update. And we see suddenly that we have actually a reference. And which is cool is that 
immediately the data that is coming from my API has been turned into a reference value. So what we need to do is to type data.value because there is some value there. And there we go. We see that we've got our data with our array. However, it's still a proxy. So that's a bit a problem. What I would need to do is first, I'm not going to call it data. However, I'm going to call it products. And what I would need to do is actually to transform to row if I want to access into my JavaScript to the data, these products dot uh, value. There we go. I update and suddenly there we go. I got my 10 products available, which is amazing. That was for the JavaScript part. However, if I want to put it into my um, template, I would put products there. And what's going to happen there? Amazing. What's happening is that we've got our uh, products displayed there. And here, the most interesting part of use fetch is that right now I got this data there. So I can put as an option here, I can put as an option a method called transform. With transform, I can say that I want to change the, 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 the model that is returned to my view. I'm going to do is to open an object just after my call here. And of course, later you may need to put some kind of headers or anything else. You can do it there. All the keys that you need to find are in the API docs. And here we see that we got many keys such as key, method, query, params, header, lazy, immediate, watch. Anyway, what we want is to use transform. And with transform, what I'm going to do is to access to my products. And here, what I want to return is actually products dot data because I got this data, which give me the array. And what I want to have immediately is just the array and not this data in front of it. So you see, you can use transform to get it. Now, if I go to my nux.config.ts and I remove this SSR false and I pass to SSR true, so now I'm on server side rendering, what happens is that nothing is happening. Because remember, use fetch can be used on SSR true or SSR false. So if you are doing client side, it will work. If you are doing uh, server side rendering, it will work also, and you won't see the difference at all. And what we want to do now, we want to use this loading uh, pending actually uh, that is available there, which is a Boolean. So if I get back to the use fetch documentation, we see that I got this pending, which is a Boolean. And what I would like to do is to display actually a loader while I'm waiting for an asynchronous call. So what we would like to use is another function, which is called use lazy fetch because use fetch is freezing your application until the moment it receives the data and then it renders the data. With use lazy fetch, we want to display a loader. So display the, the, the application immediately and display a loader instead. So it means that here in my data, what I need to do is actually to return a promise. So here it's going to be an asynchronous call. And what I want to do is to return a new promise the old way. Okay. And then here I will have a resolve and reject. I'm just going to use resolve. I will not reject. And there I'm going to actually put a set timeout function. And this set timeout function will answer after 2000 milliseconds. And what's going to happen is that I'm going to resolve. And what I'm going to resolve is my data. Okay, so I'm going to save this. And back in my application, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, hey, if it is pending, I want to have loading. Otherwise, I want to have the products. All right. So we have a function which is called use lazy fetch, which is a use fetch, but that is not freezing our application. And on uh, the um, products um, endpoint, we have a promise. So we're going to wait for some time, actually 2000 milliseconds, so two seconds to render our app. So let's try. I'm going to update. 
And what's happening is that we have a loading during 2000 milliseconds and we have then the uh, array that is displayed, which is very cool because most of the time with this use lazy fetch, we would like to have some kind of skeleton waiting for the app and it's working very well. 